that name of Jesus. It's the sweetest name that I know. Don't it feel good being here this morning? Just praying. Last week, my wife and I went to Sully's restaurant. And I, after we finished eating, I gave the waiter my car. And he went and ran it and he brought it back. And he said, man, how cool to have a name like that. He said, how did you get that name, Picasso? I told him in 1972, during the Christmas break, my mom had a thought. I'm going to name my baby Felix Nelson. And there's a lot of Felixes out there, but I, never, I don't know anybody named Felix Nelson. Well, she was four months pregnant then. So in April of 1973, Channel 7 News came on, W. Dale. And when it came on, the announcer said, we have some breaking news. The famous artist named Pablo Picasso has just died. And my mom was like, I love it. I, I, I love it. Not that he died. They said, I love it. And at that point, that was the birth of the name of this legend. <laughs> After the death of another legend. Right. See, so we both could be here at the same time. So I had to go. <laughs> but as I was reviewing th this name, I realized that this name meant something. I found out that the name Picasso meant a male who appears to be attractive from far away. I got excited, but I saw the next point. Far away, but up close, not so much. <laughs> well, the devil is a lie. I renamed that. <laughs> that cost him his little day to do something. Like that. <laughs> but it means I'm going to give it a new name. The, the, the man right here, you know. I, I, but in all seriousness, when you look throughout the Bible, when someone has a name, it's just not something you call someone. The, main, the name dictates their character. And what kind of person they are. When you look in the Bible, Satan means opposer, adversary. Yeah. Devil means accuser and slander. A uh, newborn baby means not sleeping for two years. I mean, everything has a meaning. But today we want to talk about that name. And it's something about the name Jesus. It's the sweetest name that I know. It's sweet in the honey yeah. from the honeycomb. Yeah, yeah. And this name, I want you to call on this name throughout the week. Right. And whatever you go through, the different yeah. pressures yeah. that life is going to send your way. Because yeah. yeah. life is going to send comfort. Yeah. 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 Whether you start it or not, it's going to come into your yeah. life. Right. So this week we're going to talk about call on the name of the Lord. Yeah. If you would, rest up on your feet as you read Proverbs. And it reads as the following. The name of the Lord, Lord is a who? Lord. Strong tower. The righteous man runs what? To it. I didn't say run from it. Let's go again. The righteous man runs what? To it. And is what? Save. You may be seated. Amen. Call on the name of the Lord. You, you, you need to know the name of God so you can get a better understanding of him. There are many names that scripture gives God. But if you know how to call on a specific name, it's going to help you in your day-to-day -day troubles. Because trouble is going to come your way. Oh, yeah. Even when you say the Lord's Prayer, hallowed be thy name, yeah. what you're saying is that you should do things and speak of the word and speak of God in ways that honor him. Yeah. Call on God. The Bible says that God, the, the name of God is your strong tower. Somebody say strong tower. Strong tower. He didn't say weak tower. He said the name of God is your strong tower. During those times back in the day, they had towers and in the cities they would place towers at different parts of the, the city. And what they would do when the enemy comes, come on say it again, when conflict comes, but don't come. 
what they can do, they can run into the strong tower, yes. they can lock it up, and they can be very high up. Yes. And then when the enemy comes, they can throw their spears at the enemy. Yes. And sometimes the enemy will try to throw their spears up, but the laws of gravity before it gets up, it ends up coming right back down. Yes. You know God is a strong tower. Yes. I mean, it'll be throwing dark, dark at you. Yes, yes. And then they don't even hit you sometimes. Have the enemy ever came against you and God keep blessing you? Yes. Have the enemy came against you and God keep elevating you? Have the enemy come against you and you keep a smile on your face? Yes. The enemy ain't ready for what God is going to do. Because God is your strong time. Yes. Some people get it mixed up and think they are the time. Yes. And they are the reason for the season. Yes. Today I want to give you seven names in the Bible that they call God. So I, I, I can't, I just, I'm going to just use seven many, but I'm going to use seven because that was my football number in Jack State. So look at seven now. The first name was Jehovah Jireh. Yeah. My Lord is my provider. Anybody know that God is my provider? In the good book, Abraham was going through some things and God told him to sacrifice his son. And when he went up to the mountain before the sacrifice, before sacrifice, God provided something for him. He provided a ram in the bush. Anybody know God got a ram in the bush for you? But you know if people try to tear you down, he has something over here to elevate your life even more. I mean, you made the haters mad. You, know? you keep making them mad. They, they holding their breath. You make sure they suffocate, trying to hold you down. The Bible says right here in Genesis 22, when Abraham was going through it, it says, so Abraham called that place, the Lord will provide. And to this day, it is said, on the mountain of the Lord, it will be what? Provided. It will be provided. He, he, he named this place of provision, Jehovah Jireh, my Lord is my provider. What that means is that you shall not lack provision because God will provide. Ain't that good? You shall not lack provision because God will provide. In Matthew chapter 6 and 28, the disciples were trying to figure it out. And, and wondering about some things in their life. And God said, do, do, not, do I not feed the birds of the air? Yeah. He said, they ain't even sold nothing and they ain't even reap nothing. They ain't even got no borns to even store anything. But still I feed the birds. Now, say, shall I just, will I feed you too? Yeah. Don't that feel good that God even feed the birds? Yeah. And he'll feed you too? Yeah. And then at that point, the disciples stop worrying. I don't know who needs to hear this, but you need to stop worrying. Yeah. Because God will provide. Yes, will. He will provide. Another name they gave that God has in the Bible, and this is a good one right here, and it says that the Lord is my shepherd. Yes. It says, Jehovah Roy, the Lord is my what? Shepherd. You know, a shepherd, the Bible said that, that Jesus is a good shepherd. Yes, yes. You see, a shepherd provides for a sheep. Yes. He cares for his sheep, and sometimes when lions and wolves and animals jump out there, the shepherd will even sacrifice his life for the sheep. Don't you know that Christ gave his life for you too? He said, I'm a good shepherd. But a shepherd may go wrong, but a good shepherd is going to be there for you. I don't know who needs to hear this, but what you're facing right now, God is going to be there for you, and he's going to provide you and guide you through it. The Lord is my shepherd. And look what David says right here. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not what? <coughs> Think back. When you didn't think it was going to work out. Did, did God work it out for you? Oh, think back when you thought you was going down. Aren't you just smiling today? Th th think back when you thought that enemy was going to destroy you and you're doing better today. I, today, I just want you to think back and look how many times he provided for you. He provided. And other people you need to know in your life that God provided. Sometimes we stay in friendships. And relationship because we think if they are alive that we're going to you got to understand that if they in your life or out of your life it's God who provide you got some guys out there they buy you a ticket gas and they, they, they rule your car get somewhere and sit down you got some ladies out there they cook one meal and they think you're a successful plumber right now because of that one meal you get somewhere and sit down there's some people out there who are switching up on you and they do one or two things for you and they think they don't want to provide for you. But boo boo, you can let them know it's God who provides for your life. And if you leave, I was serving the God that did good to me before I saw you. Some folks think that they are the son 
and the earth revolves around them. No, baby, I serve a God that provides. Yes, right. Don't be afraid out there. People will switch it up on you. They think you need them and all that. Hey, I want to work with you if you're going to work with me, but if you want to flip out and trip out, I know that the Lord will provide. He's a good shepherd, not just a shepherd. When the stuff come around, he run away. He's a good shepherd. I saw some right recently. I saw this little post right here. And, you know, over the years, we've had um, musicians at the church. And, you know, it's pretty good. And, and, and I don't know, some of them, they don't want to want, want to play a piano. They want to come in late and do all that. And, and we had a minister of music over time. And not missing practice and all that. And super talented. But everybody, all of us are replaceable. I'm like, well, I'm Beyonce, you must not know about me. <laughs> It'll be another one here in a minute. <laughs> but folks didn't know that I serve God. They didn't know you serve God. And so what I'm saying is, there's some people in your life, and you know you're doing the will of God, and they don't want what you want, and it's fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You gotta let them off. You can't let the whole ship go down because of one or two people. And I, I've had them. Uh, 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 uh. You know, I had to do this and this, and I've got to get myself together. No, boo boo. You knew you're going to be pricing. Come on now. I've had contractors say, hey, this thing going to be done in two weeks. Go there. And he ain't showed up one day, next day. And I'm like, look, you know what? Let's go ahead, like the man had, let's kiss and say goodbye. Yeah. Now, that's figurative, man. That ain't no figurative, no. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but you got to let them know that, hey, I, I, you know, if somebody else can do this, if you won't do it right. 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 Many times we put up so much mess. And we forget who woke you up this morning. We forget who clothed you and put you in your right mind. The Lord will. Wow. And you're not obligated to be sitting around waiting on somebody else to get it together. You know what it is? I saw a post on there pretty cute, pretty cute. And it says, I had to learn this. You can't make someone be ready for what you are ready for. Right. You are not obligated to wait around for them to make up their mind. Right. <laughs> it got to be a win-win situation. Right. Not no win-lose. Oh, man. Well, baby, I'm, 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 I want to get married. Mm. Let's well, be engaged for 20 years. <laughs> You know, boo, I want a relationship. Uh, me too. Let's just uh, be friends with benefits. You know, uh, 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 you know, boo, you got a uh, uh, addiction. Let me help you. Yeah, I want some help. But uh, let, I wouldn't do it in five years. No, you're not obligated to wait around on nobody. Right. People are screaming you alone and play you like a piano. <laughs> Understanding your life is God who provides. Yeah. Jehovah Jireh, yeah. my Lord and provider. Some other day they gave God, that God gave him. He said, I'm Jehovah Rapha. He, he, he said, see, see, Rapha means that during this time, the Israelites were going on a journey through the wilderness. And there was some bitter water in Marah. And, and, and God he put, told Moses to stick in the water, and it healed the bitter water. Don't you know that Jesus heals you too? Don't you know he heals broken heart? Don't you know he heals broken mind? Don't you know he heals broken souls? came to this earth, healed the lame, healed the sick, healed the souls of us. And you understand it's God who does the healing. Look at this verse right here. It says in Exodus 15 and 26, it said, if you listen, after he did this now, I want you to think back. If you listen to your wife and how he's done great things, if you listen carefully to the voice of the Lord, your God, and do what is who? Right. In his eyes, if you pay attention to his what? Command and keep all his who? Decrees, right? I will bring you, what did he say? What? I will bring on you any of the what? I will not bring on you any of the diseases that I brought on what? The Egyptians. For I am the Lord who does what? Yes. Don't you know when God told Pharaoh to go tell, when God told Moses to go tell Pharaoh to free my people, let my people go? And then he put some plagues on that country? Don't you know those plagues hit everybody except the Israelites? Come on now, how many people out there know some people that they be going through whatever, whatever, and then you, God, they don't even touch you? 
the economy bad right now, but you still living good. You know, they, they, they lay people off, but you still get a promotion at work. So God will bless you in the midst of the storm. The Lord who heals. The Lord who heals. There's something about that name, Jesus. Anybody can agree with this one? Yeah. And there is something about the name of Jesus. Call on that name when trouble come your way. Call on that name when you face opposition. Call on that name when they be hating on you. Man, there's something about that name. I had a good friend named Jerry Blackston. He was a farmer. Mr. Stewart, big old strong guy. He was out there feeding his bulls and some kind of way his bull got upset and started attacking him, knocked him down and stumping on top of him, just attacking him. He had some other helpers out there, some other men, and they were trying to get the bull off him. And you know a bull will kill you now. I went to go see Jerry in the hospital. He had a couple broken bones. And I said, man, glad you had a couple helpers out there to help you get that, help get that bull off of you. He said, no, Picasso, that ain't how it went down. He said, when the bull was attacking me, the guys couldn't get the bull off me. But my wife ran up there and said, in the name of Jesus, stop. And the bull stopped. There's something about that name. It didn't even make the bull head piece of people sometimes listen. Anybody knows my bull head? The bull stop is something about the name of Jesus. Yeah. If you reflect over your life, when you had a little lump on your breast, and it did a second test, and it came back, yeah. non cancer, it's something about that name. Yeah. If you had a philosophy and it came back, and it was all good, it's something about that name. Yeah. When, you, when you open a, a bag of uh, Oreo, and there's nothing up in it, but below it, it is uh, uh, some chips of heart, it's something about that name. Yeah. I don't know, I, I, I didn't think about it. Something about that name. The name Jesus. And then we have another name, the Lord of Peace. Jehovah. It says Shalom. See, 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 see. Sometimes you need some peace. Mick Jagger said, I just can't get no satisfaction. Yeah. And I try. And I try. Sometimes your mind be so filled up with stuff that you can't think straight. But he's your Lord of Peace. Yeah. He's right here. In Judges 6 and 23 and 4, it says, But the Lord said to him, right? Peace be who? Do not fear, you shall not die. And then it said, Then Gilman built an altar there, right, to the Lord, and called it who? The Lord of Peace. The Lord of Peace. Sometimes in life, all you want is some peace. Sometimes you used to want fancy things, and you used to want to elevate your career. I want to elevate with peace. But if it take my peace, it's too expensive for me. Right. Yeah. Ain't nothing like peace, boy. You see, y'all, y'all on the thirty, y'all don't know nothing about that. But it's, it's about my my mental. Yeah. I, I gotta protect my mental. Yeah. Yeah, you know, yeah, you, yeah, I got to. And you got to take protect your mental because yeah. people are passing out with heart attack now. Yeah. People are passing out. The love, the Lord, yeah. peace. I had an employee, Dr. Um, Hill Williams. He used to always bring us into the office at times when people were going through stressful situations. And he used to always have this thing in there. And he had a picture in there one day. He showed one of the teachers. This is what he did to him. He showed a picture of an atlas. And it was a man trying to hold the world up and falling down and trying to struggle, trying to hold the world up. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to help somebody out there. You try to hold everybody mess, and you got too much pressure on your shoulder already. Okay? And he was trying to hold it up. And then he shows another picture. And he had Jesus over there holding the world up in his hand. See, see, the, the young saint would say Jesus, right? He got the whole world in his hand, right? And, 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 and that metaphor stuck with me for so long because I realized that you and I need to say sometimes, God, here is my life. Here is my world. Hold it in your hand. I'm turning over to you. And your life will get better. And you can just get better. Tell you, that's something you just got to give it to Jesus. You gotta pass it on to Jesus. You don't understand why they don't want what you want, give it to the Lord. You don't understand why they do what they do, give it to the Lord. You don't only understand why they ain't even hating on you. You give it to the Lord. Lord. You argue with a fool, you just being foolish. Give it to the Lord. The 
Lord. Yeah. Here's another name that means someone, a sweet name. Yahweh. These are specific names you call on. Yahweh. Yes. That means God is what? Unchangeable. Unchangeable. This, this represents a covenant that God had with the Israelites. That he's the almighty God. Omnipotent God. They said Yahweh in the Old Testament 6,823 times. That's what the name right there. That means that nothing can separate you from his covenant. It was sealed with the blood of Jesus. Hold on to his hand. God's unchanging hand. It's something about the name. That when, when you're going through this, something right now, you cannot get an understanding on it. You just think that God ain't changed. The name means something. In scripture, they gave names that identify the character of the person. Today, they give somebody, they didn't give anybody a name these days. You don't see so many names you parents give kids. It's kind of name, I was in the hospital uh, earlier this year for a, a, a procedure. They put some drugs in my arm, and the nurse came in to take me to the back, and her name, she's like 22 years old. And she said her name was Ethel. I said, baby, your parents' name is I was on drug you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I said, it's going to be about 40 years before you get to that. Ethel? <laughs> You got a kid in the first grade named Margaret. Come on, Margaret, you about 50 years for you. Anyway, leave me alone. So, 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 there's something about this name, Yahweh. In Psalms 83 18, it says, May they know that you alone, whose name is who? Yahweh. Are the most high, right? Over the who? Oh, you need to know Yahweh. That means that God is unchangeable. He's there for you. You need God in your life because sometimes you won't be feeling safe. Well, who we worried sometimes? How it's gonna turn out? And you need that safe place because he's your strong child. Amen. You don't feel safe sometimes. You got Kim Jong Un got nuclear weapons in North Korea. You got Russia attacking a Ukraine. You don't feel safe. You got my daughter lazy out here driving. You got all these things going on. <laughs> I don't feel safe. I ride up day. I'm like I don't feel safe. I, <laughs> my blood pressure. OJ, I gave her my beautiful cross and all my vehicles silver and black. And it had no dicks in it when I gave it to her. How do you get a bell box? And that ain't moving. I ain't talking about no women driving today. I ain't gonna talk about that today, but I'm saying. But anyway, but God is that safe place for you. Yahweh. And the next one, it means this right here. It is L L Yah. See, 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 El Yulon. This is what God does right for us. He is the most high, no matter what you face in your life. You see, 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 let, let me give you an example right here with Moses. He, he really got into it. He said in Genesis 14, 20, he said, Blessed be God, the most who? Who delivered your enemies into your what? You know, God will make the old enemy your footstool. It's the person that put you down, I'll turn around and need you. And you be like, oh, you need me now. Okay. <laughs> now, you're not supposed to do that, but we human, right? <laughs> Abraham had 318 trained men doing this verse right here. But I'm going to tell you what, he had to go fight four kings, different kings at different times, and they had thousands of men. And Abraham was able to defeat them. Come on now. Doesn't it feel good when it's against all odds that God bring you to the other side? And what that means that it's so, so, it's so spectacular in your life, and it's only because of the most who? The most high God. Man, God will change that situation around for you right now. I want you to think back. Even though it don't make sense, even though it looks like it's not going to work out, you serve the most high God. Ms. Jackson, your girl, been acting up in school. So London was diagnosed with autism. And she supposed to be on her desk doing work at Tim. But she climbed in the window and everywhere else, right? So they had us go to get her tested again. And the doctor said that she has ADHD. And that um, 
she also had a learning disability. And so the teachers called me last week and asked me, do we want to hold her back? I'm like, no, nah, not for her condition. And so they took out the regular classes and I said, I don't think holding her back only up. But I, I trust in the, in the, the most I got. So the other night, I told London, I said, London, it's time to go to bed. It's 8.30. No, Daddy, London don't want to go to bed. <laughs> so I grabbed my bill. Okay, Daddy, London ain't going to bed. <laughs> and told me to whoop her, but sometimes I'll be in the mood, you know. <laughs> so London agreed with me. She said, come here, mommy, let's go, let's pray with me too. You I leave right out, because they be that debating and all. Uh -huh. <laughs> she got in her bed, got right here, and she I got beside her, got on my knees and prayed like we normally do. And my wife's over here before I walked in there though. She told what I said to school. I told my wife, I said, I'm gonna act like I'm praying for for, um, for, for, for a meal. And so cool. See if she can catch up the difference, right? <laughs> So she gets down, Mommy, you can come sit right here. And I'm like, okay, Dad. And I saw a friend. And I said, God is grace. God is good. Let him thank you. Hold on. Mm -hmm. That's for food, Daddy. No, that, that, that ain't for mom. <laughs> Mommy, that's for food. That, that ain't how you pray. Hey, let me show you how to pray. Uh -oh. so, now I lay me down to sleep. I pray to Lord my soul to keep. If I die before I wake, I pray to Lord my soul to take. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Now that's how y'all pray. And she jumped in her bed. <laughs> that's how you pray. You call on the name of Jesus when you're facing something in your life. Come on, my beloved. You, 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 you see, when, 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 you, when your doctors say that you, your kids can't learn, God will open the other possibility. <laughs> I mean, I always have my Bible with me and bullets. Some people have, you know, the Bible. But they can hear those. You can't hear the Bible, but you hear those bullets. So I cruise into the stove while I got out my six-fold. 
And as I got my diet coat and my white cheddar popcorn, I'm walking out. He was speaking to me over there. Hey, how you doing? And I looked over and I saw a guy looking at me. I just walked in my truck. And as I was walking, I hear someone from over here say, for God, so knelt. And while I looked at him, he said, his name, I'm not going to tell you the thing for innocence, right? I'm like, whoa, we went to high school together. And he said, yeah, we played football together too. I'm like, yeah, I remember. He was an offensive lineman. Come from an affluent neighborhood. I turned around and walked over to him. I wanted to say, what happened? But sometimes you just got to show people love and close your mind. the one riding big boy trucks and all that. We from the hood. We just trying to get a crack and ride by. Like, what? When I got to him, he put his head down. And he had tears in his eyes. Without saying a word, I just put my hand on him. I said, man. He said, I feel so ashamed. I said, man, don't feel ashamed. I'm in a dark place too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, some of y'all about to lose your mind. Yeah, yeah. And it's only the name of Jesus. Yeah. Right, you're still here. Yeah. And, in your mind. Yeah. and you know what to tell me about? I got in a dark place and I started healing and, and I was at this, this, this organization. I was running it and I, I slipped back again. Yeah. He said, I got away from Jesus again. Mm -hmm. And he said, with the drugs and the liquor, and I just got back in a slump. But he said, now I'm ready to give my life back to Christ. He said, I just done strayed too far away. And I told him, no matter how far away that you stray away, it's only one more step to return back to Jesus. It don't matter what the distance you went from Christ. If you've been across town, it's only one step back to Jesus. If you across the country, it's only one step back to Jesus. If you run away from this teaching, it's only one step. Jesus, that's good news right there. You see, I don't know how far the earth is from heaven. But I do know it's one prayer away. It's sweeter than honey? Yes. From the honeycomb. Yes. It's sweet. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. He'll bless you. Thank you. He'll bless you too. He'll yeah. bless me. Yeah. He's able to. Right. Is anybody out there? Yeah. That's the good news. Yeah. Something about it. Yeah. Yeah. The name of Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. Today I gave you the tools for your life. Yeah. And these tools. It's for you to call on the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. He's your strong tower. Yes, yes. And you have comfort. Yes, yes. You don't run away from it. Yes, yes. You run yes. to it. Yes, yes. Whatever you face, you got a specific name yes, for him. Yes, yes. If you in a season of life, yes, yes. you call on Jehovah Jireh. Yes, yes. If you need some guidance, you don't know which way to go. Yes, yes. The Lord is your shepherd. Yes, yes. If you need a healing right now, some yes. sickness in your body. Yes. You got a Lord who heals. Yeah, yeah. And if you're lacking peace in your yeah, life, yeah. you got a Lord of peace. Yeah, yeah. And if you don't know how things are going to work out yeah. and you look back on your life, yeah, yeah. you can hold on. Yeah. You're like, yeah. 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 There's also time when you get all eyes. Yeah. Yeah. It don't make sense. Yeah. Don't you know that you serve the most high God? Yeah. It's called Emmanuel Amen. because God is we with you. Let's give us the glory. Folks say sometimes when I can't talk, yeah. I just raise yeah. my hand. Yeah. Yeah. 
all in. Jesus is on the main line. And you tell him what you want. Call him in name. I remember in high school, boy, some guys were trying to tell me about something. But you do know, boy, until you experience, you experience it for yourself, it don't make a lot of sense to you. And he was telling me, he was in the field house at Hattiesburg High. He said, man, you should try this place called Shipley Donuts. They said, man, the donuts be rolling and the glaze be coming out, but they come out the belt, the glaze be hitting. And it be so hot and juicy and so tasty. And you need to try that place. You see, I wasn't coming down Harder Street to come to the campus. But I changed my route. One day, a couple guys, I stopped by there before practice. And we stopped by there. And I said, man, give me seven donut holes. Give me seven chocolate glaze. Give me seven strawberries. And we all had a feast. And it was so delicious. Now they told me it was delicious. But until I experienced myself, I stopped going by it. I started going by it every day. <laughs> it's something about when you experience Jesus for yourself. You keep going back to it. Every day. But I noticed if I can go out there and call out the different flavors of donuts. Come on. Yeah. I can say Jehovah Jireh, my Lord, in the Bible. I can say Jehovah Shalom coming to my life. I can say Emmanuel coming to be with me. Yeah. Yeah. You leave today. Yeah. And you can call everybody else. Yeah. Yeah. Your sister about your father. Yeah. Call your mama about your father. Yeah. You can call them the name of Jesus. Yeah. Because you have experiences for yourself. Yeah. And you can call him every day. Yeah. And he'll be there. Yeah. Because our Lord will be back. If you receive the message, let's give God his praise. We hope you enjoyed the message today. It is now time for tithes and offering. There are three ways to give. You can use our cash app at the bottom of the screen. You can also text and it's at the bottom of the screen. Or if you would like, we have a drop box here at the church where you can drop off your giving. Now, if something was said today that moved you and you want to give your life to Christ, we would like for you to call us at 601-408-7156. We want to talk to you about your decision today. Thank you for tuning in this morning at South 28. We hope and pray something was said that was enlightening to your life. Throughout the week, you can host a watch party or share this with a friend. Look, we hope and pray to see you back next week. Be blessed, my friend. Thank you.